this is the second video in this series and we are going to focus on the 1 MB region okay so this is the 1 MB region here it's also called the legacy region and let's see how it's mapped in the original IBM PC PCXT days before we go further let's digress for a minute and talk about segmentation we all know about segmentation in x86 architecture. But here's a quick refresher on segmentation if required. Those who are familiar with this concept can skip over the next couple of minutes. Okay, so the 20 bit physical address is split into a segment and an offset. So here the 20 bit address, right? which is split into a segment and an offset. Each segment is 64 kilobytes in size. So to cover the 1 MB size, we need 16 such 64K segments. That will give you 1 megabyte. So your 16 segments from 0 all the way to segment F. So you can see in the diagram here we have segment 0 all the way to segment F up here. Both the segment and the offset are 16 bits wide. So how do we derive a 20 bit value out of it? To derive a 20 bit value we shift left the segment by 4 and add the offset to it. So let's say the segment value is F1000 and the offset value is 8000 for example then the physical address would be the segment shift left by 4 so add extra 0 here we are shifting left by 4 bits and then add it with 8000 which is the offset and we get F8000 as with physical address. Now going back, segments F and E, this contains the bias. Okay. Now, any transactions coming to segments E and F, okay, they can either target the bias flash or they can target DRAM or main memory. Right? In other words, access to the F and E segments can either go to the BIOS chip up here to fetch the BIOS code or it can be mapped so that access to F and E target system memory. BIOS resides in the separate flash chip in the motherboard as part of the IOS subsystem. Right? So this BIOS flash is part of the IOS subsystem. So when we first power up the platform or when we reset the platform, the execution starts at F1000 colon FFF0, which is a physical address of FFFFF0. This is where the top 16 bytes here, right? This is where the execution starts coming out of reset. So this is also called the reset vector. When we first power up the platform, segments E and F point to the BIOS flash here so that BIOS code can start executing. Later on, during BIOS execution, after memory is initialized and available, BIOS copies some portions of itself to main memory okay, and switches the map so that the accesses for F and E now go to main memory. This process is called BIOS shadow. BIOS shadowing. The process is called BIOS shadowing. And once it is copied to main memory and the map is switched so that F and E segments now point to main memory, then the F and E segments are called the BIOS shadow. There are a few reasons why we do this. We can't execute out of flash forever. A, it's slower. 
B. Most of BIOS is compressed and we need to uncompress and run it somewhere else in memory. Now before OS handoff, BIOS places the runtime handlers in the F1E segment. Runtime handlers means those interfaces that the BIOS exposes to the operating system. Okay, so segments C and D contain the option ROM. Okay, option ROM. They are also known as expansion ROM. Okay. We will talk about expansion ROM while discussing the IO subsystem, PCI, PCIe, etc. Segments A and B are for SMRAM. These segments are for SMRAM. The same as the legacy SMRAM or CSEG that we touched upon in the previous session. And segments A and B are also for the VGA buffer. So segment A and B maps to both SMRAM and the VGA buffer. Well, I should say SMRAM or the VGA buffer depending on our mode of operation. Just like segments E and F can point to the BIOS flash or point to main memory, segments A and B can be made to switch between SMRAM or the VGA buffers. VGA buffer is again in the IO subsystem. It's MMIO, memory mapped IO space. And here again, the BIOS flash is also a memory mapped IO space. We'll talk about MMIO in future videos. Okay, so accesses to segments A and B typically go to the VGA buffer. But under SMM mode of operation, it switches to main memory or SMRAM. This SMRAM below 4 gig, also known as CSEG, is not used in current platforms. So let's not dwell too much on this. Okay, so we have usable memory all the way up here, which is segment 9 and segment A to F, uh, we just saw what it contains. So from segment 0 to segment 9, we have usable memory. So we have 10 segments of 64K each that gives us 640 kilobyte of usable memory below the 1 MB area. The first 1K within segment 0, 1K, which is 0 to 3FF, contains the interrupt vector table or IVT. We will have detailed sessions on interrupts later on, but here is a quick refresher. You can think of the IVT as an array of function pointers, each pointing to an interrupt service routine, ISR. This array is indexed by the interrupt vector number. In x86 processors, each interrupt will have a 8-bit vector number associated with it. So we have interrupt vectors from 0 to 255. There are two classes of interrupts. We have software interrupts, such as executing an int instruction. or hardware interrupts, but both classes of interrupts share from the same pool of 255 vector numbers. In the case of a software interrupt, the vector number is provided as part of the instruction. For example, software can execute an int 15 instruction. Hence, the processor knows that the handler for this interrupt will be the 21st entry in the interrupt vector table. Since 15H translates to 21 decimal, it will be the 21st entry in the interrupt vector table. In the case of hardware interrupt, the interrupt controller provides that vector number. The next one kilobyte starting from 400H, 0 to 3FF is the IVT, and starting from 400, we have the BIOS data area or BDA, which the BIOS builds during boot. This link has a good list of what the BDA contains. Starting from 40 colon 0, this gives an exhaustive list of the BDA contents. 
take a look at this when you get a chance. Now take a note of the entry 40 colon 0 E which contains the extended bias data area segment and 40 colon 13 which contains the memory size in kilobytes. This entry 40 colon 13 reflects only the memory size below 1 meg. Okay, so the extended bias data area or EBDA is stolen from the 640 KB of memory, right? So we have 640 KB of DOS memory and the EBDA is stolen from the top of that memory range. Remember 40 colon 0 E on, on the BDA this contains the segment of the EBDA, right? It contains the EBDA segment. Now, EBDA segment colon zero, the byte at EBDA segment colon zero will tell us the EBDA size in multiples of one kilobyte. So, EBDA size can range from zero to 255 kilobytes. But since this is stolen from the 640 kilobyte DOS area, 40 colon 13 in the BDA should be adjusted to report a lower memory, depending on how much is allocated for EBDA. For example, let's say that we have an EBDA of 1K, then 40 colon 13 should report 639 kilobyte since one kilobyte is stolen for EBDA. And 40 colon 0 E should have the segment for the EBDA. So let's calculate what it should be for our example of one kilobyte of EBDA. Since EBDA is stolen from the top of DOS memory, we need to subtract the EBDA size from 9F, F, F, X, right? That will be the top of segment 9, our last segment of usable memory. In our case, we subtract 1k or 3ff, right? We subtract 3ff from this, which will give us 9fc00h. So the EBDA segment would be EBDA segment would be 9FC0H. Okay, so that's it for the lower 1 MB region. In the next video, we'll look at a high level flow of the BIOS starting from the reset vector. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.